a tiny silver object hurtling through the vast expanse of space, shining bright in the reflected light of our nearest star. And rocketing towards this tiny heavenly object, the moon, India's Chandrayaan-3 carried a billion hopes and dreams. At 6.04 p.m. on Wednesday, August 23, it made a safe and soft landing. And like a dutiful child assuring its concerned parent, it texted home saying, India, I reached my destination and you too. The message brought tears to many eyes at the Indian Space Research Organization or ISRO, which had waited for the moment for nearly four years since that time when Chandrayaan 2 had almost made it. With the Vikram lander's successful landing on the far side of the moon, India on Wednesday became the first country in the world to achieve the feat. The lander, named after the father of India's space mission, Vikram Sarabhai, set its feet on the moon, an event witnessed live by millions across the globe. The Chandrayaan-3 mission had a total of seven payloads at launch, six of which are ISROs, while one is NASA's. Four of these are aboard the Vikram lander, two on Pragyan rover and one on the propulsion module that carried the craft from the Earth into the Moon's orbit. Within minutes of making a soft landing, Vikram sent out a rover, Pragyan, that will now explore the lunar surface. Among Pragyan's two payloads is the Alpha Particle X-ray Spectrometer or APXS, which will determine the elements present on the Moon's surface at the landing site. It will help detect the major elements on the surface of the Moon, including aluminium, calcium, iron, magnesium, yttrium, and zirconium. The second payload is the Laser-Induced Breakdown Spectroscope, or LIBS. This payload will calculate the abundance in which these elements are present. The success of Chandrayaan-3 has also put the spotlight on several other ambitious projects that are in the pipeline at ISRO. Some of them include a planned coronagraphy spacecraft to study the sun's atmosphere, putting humans in space, and to start a space tourism industry by the year 2030. Besides these, ISRO is also developing reusable rockets and a reusable space launch system. In fact, the organization has also finalized the architecture for its ambitious next generation launch vehicle or NGLV project. So, as far as vehicle is concerned, now we have a robust vehicle called Mar 3 and we are working on improving the vehicle again to carry more and more payload. Now our capacity is 4 tons. Photon is not sufficient. In part of the global standard, we should at least go to 6, 8 or 10 tons of the capacity. That work is parallelly going on. That is a different area. And with respect to satellite technologies and remote sensing technologies and ground station capabilities of tracking the system, etc., we have almost come to a kind of matured level. The missions will require an even greater focus on research and development by the ISRO. On this front, experts say that Chandrayaan 3's success, along with the recently released space policy, could really help ISRO. The Government of India released the India Space Policy 2023 a couple of months ago. Given the success of uh, Chandrayaan, uh, I really see an acceleration happening in terms of execution of all the items that are mentioned in the Space Policy 2023. We would see a lot more uh, interested entrepreneurs and existing private sector enterprises wanting to play a role in the space sector, which would allow ISRO, who's now the new defined role as per the space policy, is to focus primarily on research development of new space technologies and applications, as well as expanding the human understanding of outer space and the commercial part of it getting accelerated through the private sector players in country. Some of these projects will take a long time to reach fruition. However, the Chandrayaan mission, as successful as it is, has both identified areas of concern and more short-term spin-off benefits. Depending on the data, what we are going to gather from the moon surface uh, experiments, we will be, our people who are the scientists who are working on it will definitely plan various other systems and 
instruments where you know more investigations are possible. So now we have to get a vehicle, we have to develop a bigger vehicle in which you know we will be able to carry more payload, more payload in the sense, you know, if you are able to put more um, propellant, you know, the maneuvering will be easy and we can put a direct route. As the Vikram lander set foot on the lunar surface, it has opened up fantastic long-term opportunities for scientific development, not just in space, but also in other allied and non-allied sectors. Now, there are about three major purposes. One is, you know, if you are going to have rare elements like helium or helium-3, that whether it is possible to get it out of from there, helium-3 is going to be one of the most useful material for the element for the energy source, nuclear energy source. Second thing is, whether we are able to make the moon as a standby station for the journey, long journey to other planets. And what technology proving, moon is happen to be our the nearest, I mean, satellite where you know, we can do may proving of the many subsystems. Experts point out that while the Chandrayaan 3's moon landing is a major milestone, it's only the beginning of the journey. The mission opens up new avenues, not just for ISRO or the development of the space sector in India, but for innovations in other scientific fields as well. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn. He's moving from employee to employer. Business Standard